Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to the video? It's another paid request, this time for Wayne. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics or whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is, uh, this is for the 1957 film Pass of Glory, which is a Stanley Kubrick movie. Uh, before, well before films like 2001, The Shining, uh, Full Metal Jacket, which those are some of my favorite Tubert films. I also really like Dr. Strangelove. But this is kind of when Tubert's finally showcasing a bit more of his vision, so to speak. Um, get maybe a bit more comfortable behind the camera and wanting to showcase different type of visual aesthetics. Now, it's supposed to take place in France, 1916, where the French are fighting the German army. And Kurt Douglas, who plays a colonel, is supposed to lead this group into taking this hill. Even though he himself is saying how there's no way we can do it. But you have this other guy who's a fucking asshole trying to suck up to the bigwig saying, yeah, we could do it. Word more about his ass history and his Hershey Highway trombone job than the reality. Now, shot in black and white... Uh, you do get some really good shot sequences from Kubrick. For example, in the trenches, the way it's shot, it'll be this tracking shot following the soldiers. You get a bit of sense of that claustrophobic feeling, like you feel like you're in the trenches with the soldiers and all the extras on either side. And you just... You get a feeling of where they're at. The... When the battle happens, like the camera's kind of on the side following the soldiers. And for most of us, keep a track with Kurt Douglas like over here. But it's like the camera's kind of following. And a lot of extras and there's explosions happening. Pretty well shot for a film in the 1950s. A bit ahead of its time. But a great chart of the film is this anti-war movie about how... Because of certain, certain circumstances, the first wave gets completely slaughtered. So the second wave, they want to survive. So they stay. And the big wig is pissed off about that. He's like, Woo, this should not have happened. And we lost the day. And you guys are cowards. So we need to kill like a, a hundred men. And people above his paid, way, paid grade said, Nah, nah. How about three? You know, choose three men to die, one from each of your companies. And it, Kurt Dudd is like, this is bullshit. But okay, I used to be a lawyer. Let's have a trial. But the trials are complete farce. Trials are a complete fucking joke. A complete fart knocker of a fucking joke. As Kurt Douglas says, it's a mockery of human justice. And... Uh, I don't know, the, the pedantic bullshittery of the higher bidwids and how they view their precious values, even though they're doing, to me, the same bullshit as the enemy is doing. You know, there's nothing honor or glory about this. It's a farce. Now, I didn't mind the film. I would get more into it is that I didn't mind the film. I, Kurt Douglas. I grew up more with his son, Michael Douglas. I did. I just, I grew up more with Michael. I grew up with Falling Down and uh, The Game with David Fincher, my favorite Fincher film. Uh, of course, he was in Wall Street. He was in uh, even Disclosure, Fatal Attraction. Black Rain, really like Black Rain. And I'm like, man, I see a lot of his son in him. I know that sounds stupid, in Kirk Douglas. Like, so I watched Kirk, it just reminds me of his son, Michael Douglas. And Kirk Douglas is a good actor. He knows how to command the screen. But he's not hamming it up or being over the top. It is one of those things that I always kept forgetting. These are supposed to be a French army. And that's kind of weird things. It's very, like, nobody's speaking French. Like, nobody's French, it seems. 
Well, not very, very few. It's like most of these folks are not. That's why it kept making me like, oh yeah, it's supposed to be France. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be French soldiers. Like Kurt Douglas, there's nothing about him French. And not even trying. Which maybe that's for the better. I'd rather, I'd rather have Kurt Douglas speak his normal way than try French. But, like I said, it's a bit, it was a bit of a confusing thing for a bit of, oh yeah, they are supposed to be French army, but again, they're speaking like I'm speaking to you. Like, if I'm speaking to you, but you're, I'm saying I'm French, you'd be like, what are you talking about? So that was a bit confusing. The trial, you know, it's really my point on that is nicely shot, just showing how you said the tightness, claustrophobic of the trenches, and then here the course is so expansive and wide, and kind of showing how the men are so alone and it's like vacant and this icy reception, and how. They're so damn alone in there, even Justice ain't there. Even Justice left a, on a vacation. And definitely, I would say, if I'm looking more for a Kubrick anti-war movie, I would go with Full Metal Jacket. That's more my cup of tea. It's one of those that, I guess when I went in, I thought it'd be a bit more of an action, like war, kind of like even Full Metal Jacket. I mean, there's a training camp whole beginning. It was very intense. But then when it gets to... I guess I felt... I didn't think it'd be as much of a trial movie. Like a few good men type of movie. Just the thing, like the, the beginning section felt like a war movie. And then it became a, a few good men type of movie. I guess I just didn't expect that part of it. And for me, like I said, I probably would rather watch Couch Duty's War for that type of thing. Or maybe even A Few Good Men. Because, like I said, this whole trial is a farce, so there's no way, no... There's no way these men are getting out of it. There's no way these men are going to be found innocent. There's no like suspense. It's like you know that this is going to be found guilty. You know they're fucked. You know. I guess maybe that's the point. But again, there's not really any suspense of will they make it out? Will they not make it out? Uh, maybe because I kind of saw it coming. Maybe other people didn't, and it's more suspenseful for them. I do think the actors do their jobs fairly well. Um, I think Black and White was an interesting decision to have for this movie. I thought, again, when the war scenes happened, they were fairly well staged. For the little bits in there. I just showcasing... Like, when you want to go out there for stupidity, and only getting killed, is that really cowardice, or is that common sense? I think Kurt Douglas brings up some good points, but it doesn't matter, because the other side, their thought process was ready and steady from the beginning. So I would say that bit with the trial was a chunk of the movie was part, the least interesting part to me. And then the, the finale is pretty grim. Like it's a grim... And it depends how you feel about that grimness. I mean, technically, Full Metal Jack... Full Metal Jack is pretty grim, too. But that one... It's a bit more... Intense because it's in the middle of this... Different type of war battle with a sniper. Which is not a normal bit with a war film but that made it a bit interesting there was this intense bit with a sniper and the way it was shot like the guy getting hit and the POV going towards and almost like the horror film type of score as they're searching for the sniper and you find out who the sniper is 
that's just felt more visceral in intensity. So that was a bit more, I hate to say, interesting in his grimness. Here, spoiler alerts who haven't seen it. They're found guilty. The three of them are ready for the firing squad. Uh, one of them was chosen because his asshole lieutenant. There's an earlier scene where they're supposed to, three people are supposed to look at what's going on. And the lieutenant sent a guy out there. The guy didn't come back as soon as he could. So the lieutenant was the chicken shit, threw a grenade and ran. And trying to find out he actually blew up one of his own guys. And the, the guy's like, you're bullshit. That's what you did was bullshit. And the lieutenant's like, hey, you know what? You don't want to fuck with me. So they ask the lieutenant because he's scared the other guy's going to tell on him. He chooses the guy. And Kurt Douglas kind of finds this out. And I do like the idea of making him lead the firing squad. And Lieutenant's like, well, I've never done that before. No, I think you're going to have to find someone else. No, you don't do it. And I, I, Kurt Douglas can be a very intense actor and sells this stuff very well. Especially the end, spoiler alert, after the firing squad where Kurt Douglas is called into the piece of shit that started all this at the beginning and the higher piece of shit and the higher piece of shit is going to have the piece of shit take the fall for during the the battle scene because the men didn't come out of the trench that piece of shit said go fire on old men to get their ass out of there well that was found out with witnesses and so there needs to be investigation so the higher piece of shit has that piece of shit take a fall but then Turtle Douglas yells at the higher piece of shit too going you go to hell before I apologize to you now or ever again just the high piece of shit thought Kurt Douglas was doing all this for brownie points. Brown nosing points. But as the high piece of shit said, you're an idealist. I pity you. What did I do wrong? I thought Kurt Douglas had a good line. Well, what did you do wrong? The fact that you don't know the answer to that. I pity you. Turn Dead was really sold that very well. And then the ending bit, I did what they were doing where Turn Dead is walking by and he sees a bunch of men very rowdy and crazy and it's like, wow, great guys. Like three of your men, because you guys decided to stay in the trenches, like three of your comrades have been killed and you're all having fun rowdy and you're picking on this German girl. But then the drummer girl seen him, and you guys finally quiet down, and then you start, they don't know the words, but they're humming it. And then they start crying. I just because maybe the sobering effect of realizing this is not a just a German, it's a person. And whether it's the songs reminding them of their morality, or reminding them of their family remind them of the possibility of their mortality the possibility of dying tomorrow the grimness of war whatever you want to put into it I did what they were going for and Turk Douglas is told something walks away and end a movie so it's not a movie that really has a quote satisfying ending or a I thought Full Metal Jacket with the sniper bit was a bit more of a punch. And then you have them sing the Mickey Mouse song and full, painted black. That just felt more of the, a good punch to end your movie on. Here, I don't know how to put it. It's like, eh. I get what they're going with. I appreciate it. But it's just, I don't know, something about it. It's not that it didn't work for me. It's just. I don't know how to put into words. A smarter person to put into words better than me. I still, it was still nice to see once because of Stanley Kubrick's direction, because of Kirk Douglas. Like I said, I did what I was doing. 
It just I would say for an anti-war tuber film, Full Metal Jacket was just more my cup of tea, like I said before. So I don't know really what else to say. But thanks for watching. Thanks once again, Wayne. And we'll see you guys later.